Don Higgins is an artist that works in a variety of mediums, best known for his graphic illustrations. Fun fact, you may have seen Don's work around Holman Stadium as he was the one that created the banners depicting and commemorating the two African-American baseball players, Don Newcomb and Roy Campanella. My name is Don Higgins. I am a freelance illustrator and art director. I work from my home studio. I do a illustration live stream uh, once a week on Facebook. I'm the art director for the 1879 line for uh, FASA Games. Uh, I've also uh, been tapped to get involved with a new game that they're developing that I can't tell you about other than they're developing a new game and I'm involved. I have worked for a lot of different gaming companies over the years. Uh, primarily now it was uh, Fireside and FASA. Uh, I'm a concept artist. Uh, that's how I've been tapped to get involved with this new game system. In this regard, they, they come up with an idea and they say, hey, we want to know what this looks like. Here's what it is. And I sit down and go, okay. And I just start drawing it out, sketching it out, and I show them, is this it? Well, we like that and we like that. Change this and change that. Okay. And I draw it and I say, how's that? Yeah, that's it. And it goes from there. So that's kind of what concepting is, uh, concept art is. Wow, in 1977, I was primarily doing wildlife. Like most kids, I uh, found the comic strips and I would draw Snoopy and things like that. Then in uh, May of 1977, a little film, you might have heard of it, came out called Star Wars. And from that point on, everything was aliens and sci-fi and monsters and my father was depressed because he thought he had a wildlife artist in the making my father was a wood carver so um a very accomplished wood carver but um he wanted me to be able to draw things that he could carve and i was off in this other multiple worlds and he was depressed but um like I said, uh, that's where I started uh, learning about concept art and uh, drawing monsters and aliens and creatures and, and fantasy creatures. Being fantasy artist, uh, you can't say you were a fantasy you're a fantasy artist without having been been influenced by Frank Frazetta, uh, uh, Boris Vallejo. Uh, I got involved with uh, Rankin and Bass, uh, not actually with them, but I, I, I watched uh, the, the first movie, The Hobbit. But of course, the master storytellers, uh, Rockwell, N.C. Wyeth, uh, wow. Um, most recently, uh, the, the major influences are uh, Ian McKaig, who is a great uh, uh, concept artist, <laughs> creator of Darth Maul. Um, he, uh, I got a chance to meet him at a master's class that I did uh, recently. Uh, Jim Lee uh, for DC Comics, uh, his inking style, Arthur Adams. Uh, wow, I can go down a huge list. Crash McCreary, um, it, lots and lots of influences. One of the things that I like to do just like as, as an exercise uh, when, I, when, I, when I teach and I get into a large group, I like to play pieces of music. And I'm not talking about uh, rock or, or anything like that I'm, uh, or anything with words. For example, I'll, I'll pick a piece of music for a group and I'll say, even if you recognize it, forget where you recognize it from it, listen to the music and what's happening during that piece of music. And I tried this with my father who's not really into this type of stuff when, when I did it with him. Um, I played uh, uh, Khan's theme from Star Trek Wrath of Khan and it's very uh, native and, and uh, there's lots of uh, action going on to it and I was really curious where is his mind going to go? Where is it taking him? And the strange thing was is that he didn't go Native American, he didn't go um, wildlife, or, which is what he's into. He went completely off land and he, he saw big clipper ships in a huge battle and I'm like, wow, and, and it, just to see where his mind would go with it. And this is what I do with the kids when I, when I teach is um, I play a piece of music and the right piece of music will get the right kind of uh, imagery in their heads. And so that's kind of what I do when I'm working um, and I have to focus. I put on the right piece of music 
for the right kind of job that I'm doing. If I start with a piece of music just to get into the zone, then I try and read what the uh, author or the game master has uh, created. And I'll read it over and over and over again until I get an idea in my head. But it starts with what's called a thumbnail. And it's just for me. Thumbnail, a lot of uh, young artists get caught up. One drawing, that's it, and then I'm done. No. <laughs> it's like, you start with a thumbnail sketch where you're just freestyling. And it's like, okay, well, maybe he's over here. No, maybe he's over there. Maybe he's over here. Maybe he's over there. And then when you find something you like, you kind of draw it a little bit bigger. And okay, this is how this works. That, how, that. And again, it's yours. It's not meant for, to be shown to the public. No one's going to get anything out of it, um, there, it other than you. As long as you understand it, that's the most important part. Just got a, a, a quick thumbnail down. I'm like, you know what? That's perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. He's got this attitude. And so I did that. So then I did, I, I did a cleanup sketch of it. But that's not the finished piece. A lot of people would say, that's done. No. Because I know that the client wants it in color. I know that the client wants it look, to look finished. So I know what I would normally do with that. But... In past, I would do a drawing like this. This would be the cleanup final black and white drawing. This is again for Fireside Creations. It's a group of cyborgs. They're, they're getting ready for a mission and that's all they gave me. So I put together this sketch and showed it to him. And one of the things, and it just, I don't know why I did it. On a whim, the third, um, the third cyborg on uh, like tracks, like a Wally -E type of a situation, but I've got her on like tread tracks, but I've got her brushing her hair and I don't know why I did it. And it's just that she's clinging to her humanity. So much of her human body is gone, but she's very intently and concentrating on brushing her hair. And, and I don't know what made me do it, but I put that together and he went nuts. Yes, yes, oh, can't you put her in the forehead? No. Don't put her in the foreground, then it's too much. Keep her in the background, but it's there, and, it, it, and, and he loved it. So I did this drawing. From that drawing, I scan it into my computer system so that I can start the colorization. I start adding color to the illustration in layers so that I keep my pencil drawing and then colorize the whole thing. Once I get the... the scan in, I put it on a gray tone background. And then the different layers of where I worked, worked up the sketch to where I finally get, this is the black and white version that he liked. But he says, can I have it in color? And I'm like, yeah, I suppose. And so you, you I took some of the information out changed it around, took the whites out so that I can go in and start adding color. And I'll zoom in on that. So now I've got the gray tone background, which he liked instead of the stark white. And I've been adding color, basically digitally painting my, my original drawing. And this is how the process works. The, the piece on my desktop is also one that I had done. The original drawing was done by hand, pencils, graphite, and then scanned into the computer, and then all the effects and all the other stuff gets added. It's just a magic stone that they managed to draw power through and attack dragons. That's all he gave me, and it's for dwarves. Like, okay. And again, you start sketching and you show him and it's back and forth and this is what came out. That's a lot of how concepting is. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, perfect, go, run. I had been doing interior artwork and, and things for the 1879 line for uh, about a year and they wanted a new product to put on the website. And I said, well, I've got a, a webcomic I did, I did for a while. Uh, called Dark Magic and Donuts. Dark Magic and Donuts was 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 a fun uh, poke at role playing game. Is basically if Mel Brooks had make it made a movie about role playing gaming, 
this would be it. The jokes are like that. And the uh, editors at uh, Fossum went, I don't think so. <laughs> We're not ready for Mel Brooks. I'm like, okay, sure. So they said, um, can you come up with a, a new webcomic? I'm like, okay. Now, the thing about 1879 is it's, um, Fantasy and magic has come back to the world. Uh, people are, have been turning into dwarves and trolls and uh, orcs and snarks and, and, and all these different magical uh, and mythical creatures. So I'm playing in that universe. I create Hey Penny Pie, which is a human guy, a inept detective, Sherlock Holmes wannabe, who's an idiot. He's, he's not a moron, but he's not really all with it and he's not a good detective but he kind of stumbles through uh, living with his dead ghost parents in their house. They want him to run the family business, which is a fish cannery. And anyway, his best friend Smedley, who he's going to work with, is a, uh, a troll who's huge. And his friend Smedley runs the local pot picket and thief ring, um, and Henry has no idea. <laughs> so he, he, keeps, he keeps Henry at bay um, and, and stays friends with him, even though he's a criminal, he keeps Henry around so he can keep an eye on him. So if he does stumble in on, on something that they're doing, he can misdirect him easily. That's Hey Penny Pie. I started doing the webcomic. And after about a year of the webcomic, it's doing okay. They said, Don, we want to have something to sell at Gen Con. We want a graphic novel of Hey Penny Pie. And I'm like, Okay, so I had to take everything that was in strip form uh, for the for the for the web comic and reconfigure it in Photoshop and Illustrator so that now they've got a book. Surprisingly, uh, at Gen Con, it sold well. I was really surprised. Nobody knew anything about it, and people just saw it and said, "Hey, this looks cool." And again, it it did really really well. This is how it goes. Um, when you think you've got a success, they always want more. Um, I had done a uh, talk at Gen Con, uh, a kind of a seminar type of a thing that happens at conventions. And I talked about the, uh, one of the things that I learned from a friend of mine, uh, a guy named Tim Lord, who runs Boston Impressions in, in Nashua. Um, he had a, a philosophy of say yes to everything and figure out how later. <laughs> it's like, and I've started, I started trying to adopt it and it, it, it did okay. In the process of this seminar, I came up and, and said, if somebody says, can you draw? Yes. And if, even if you can't say yes, and then go figure out how, so that you, 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 you haven't lied. Um, but it's that say yes attitude. And I mean, I had the whole crowd, can you draw? Yes. Can you draw? Yes. So the boss of FASA, can you draw a webcomic and graphic novel for Earth Dawn? And I went, uh, and he goes, come on, Don, what are you going to say? And I'm like, <laughs> so I created uh, a second webcomic, and it's uh, 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 the Kickstarter for the graphic novel just uh, finished and funded for Champions Challenge. So it's in printing right now. Learning the process of, instead of doing a straight strip webcomic, I have changed all of how I create those comics so that it's easier to put together as a webcomic. And I've kept all my original pages, and then I'll scan these into the computer and typeset them and set them up. Strip was one format and a, a comic book is entirely different. Like a newspaper strip is just one, three, like three or four panels in a row and that's it. Um, that's how a strip is, is put together. Because I have been a comic book fan, uh, the, the process of just, okay, rethink of, uh, of how I'm going to tell my story into a page format as opposed to a strip format is, is really uh, just a, a shifting of gears. I have pieces that I like a lot, but usually when I'm working and 
I've just finished something. I'm so excited about it. And, and, and oh, I, I learned a lot doing this and I changed this and this is how I did the process this time. Every time I do something like that, that's my favorite piece until the next piece comes along. Anything that's a challenge, that's, that's the favorite piece because I, I, I have ch I've challenged myself or the, the author has challenged me to do something out of my comfort zone. For years, people said, Don, you should draw your own comic. And I said, I, I can't, well, why not? Because everything's been done. You can't name a superpower without somebody being able to say, well, that's already been done by this comic and, and that's, this comic hero is already doing that or this comic hero is already doing that. Stop worrying about it. Got a story to tell? Tell it. There, it's like saying, you, you, I can't draw a comic because my superhero that I want to draw flies. I can name 50 comic book heroes that fly. Just do it. Um, tell your story and have fun telling the story so that you're passionate about it. So when people ask you about it, you can say, hey, I do this. I tell this story and, and get him involved in it because he's this. My, my, my character is a wannabe detective, but he's no good at it, but he's having fun, so he's doing it. And they're like, that sounds interesting. How's he doing it if he's no good? Because, and once you've got him to ask one question, they're hooked and they're gonna wanna read how he does it. Here, read the book, find out. When the fir they first started talking about the lockdown, there is a great meme um, of uh, from, from uh, uh, I think it's Goodfellas, where they're all kind of uh, sitting around uh, at dinner and they're, they're laughing hysterically. And they put up day one uh, of, of the lockdown for stay-at-home artists. It's like, oh, we're going to be locked down for a couple of weeks? <laughs> and they're laughing. Um, and I kind of felt like that. It's like, I'm home all day, every day, by myself. No biggie. It's gotten... <sighs> steadily worse um, where normally I the, the things that I did kind of took for granted being able to go character sketch at uh, and people watch at the local bookstore I can't do that now particularly because there's so much of their faces that's covered and you think so the, the character is gone it, 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 everybody's got a mask eh, big deal um, it's not the same. You can't just go out and, and do things anymore because you're stuck behind walls. An artist will show you their feelings or try to um, evoke a feeling with their art. As I understand it, in my opinion, that's how their process, so that's what they need to do. They're trying to evoke a feeling or, or, or inspire a feeling or show you what they're feeling. An illustrator tells a story. He wants you to immerse yourself into the scene or he wants you to meet this character. So there's gotta be so much that's going on that the viewer is gonna go, well, what's he happy about? Why don't you ask him? And, and it's, in your head, where does that, where does this go? Um, which is kind of like how the music ties in. You hear something going on in the music, something has just happened in this uh, important part of the music. What happened there? Show me. That's the whole, what I, what I like to do is I like to inspire people to tell stories as I like to tell stories. I'm a storyteller. You have your own way of doing things. You have your own style. You have a story to tell. Tell it. My work is available at DonHigginsIllustration.com Thank you for joining our virtual art week. City Arts Nashua appreciates the support of our sponsors and you, our viewers. Please continue to support our local artists and our musicians and theater groups. For more information on Arts in Nashua, please visit cityartsnashua.org.